All right, this lecture is going to be an introduction to the message passing interface, or MPI. We've already talked about it a little bit in the introduction to parallel computing and that it's most useful for, uh, and it's the de facto standard for distributed memory parallel computing. Uh, so this basically just says what I just said. Uh, the standard um, MPI uh, application programming interfaces that are out there are typically written in C or C++ and Fortran, and these include uh, such implementations as OpenMPI. Go ahead and write that. OpenMPI. Uh, MPitch is another one. There's also MVPitch, which is more useful for more used in architectures that have uh, InfiniBand uh, interconnect. Uh, but all three of these MPIs, uh, I'm sorry, all three of these APIs should be implemented in such a way that they conform to the standard uh, MPI2. So it shouldn't matter which one you use, you might get slightly different performance, but uh, the application programming interface in each of those three languages should be basically identical. Um, we also have uh, an implementation that's accessible in Python through the module MPI for Pi. So <clears throat> the kind of a programming paradigm that we use in, in message passing is that an MPI program is launched as a separate program or process or task, um, each with their own address space. And this requires partitioning of the data across tasks. So typically we have some data, we break it up into chunks, and then we send those chunks out to all the different processors to get operated on. The data is explicitly moved from task to task. That is that we explicitly uh, call methods that tell the data you know, to go from one process to another or from one process to all the other processes. And this is kind of a, the idea behind the, the message passing. And so there's two two classes of message passing their you know point to point uh, communications and their collective communications so we've already done a little bit of exercise in class with send and receive and those are point to point communications so as I mentioned MPI for Pi is a module um, for Python that gives us access to the MPI application programming interface in almost one to one correspondence with the C++ interface so if you learn it in Python, while uh, the syntactically it should be easier, uh, if later on you need to move to C++ due to performance uh, needs, it should be very straightforward. Uh, another nice thing is that we can also pass as messages uh, very general uh, Python objects. And so, of course, you know, as with all things Python, what what you lose in performance or may lose in performance, uh, you gain in a short, a much shorter development time. So we begin each MPI program with a, establishing a communicator object. And so typically we instantiate it with uh, the macro that's called MPI com world. Uh, this would be uh, defined in a header file in C or C++ as it looks there. Uh, and typically the, the way this is used is that you call this at the beginning of your program. Uh, MPI com world is defined as all the processors of your job. And uh, you know you would call this at the beginning, and then what that would do is assign a unique rank or a unique process ID to all the different um, tasks that were instantiated. Uh, so if you called this on two processors, or if you called MPI on two processors, then this would establish two ranks. If you called it on four, it would establish four ranks. Um, these are uh, you know ranks again are just kind of these process IDs. They start uh, their index from, uh, you know, the, uh, the zero index as all things C. So zero, one, two, three would be for four processors. <coughs> and again, they're assigned by the system when the MPI object is instantiated. So very simple hello world program where we're going to, and this is using the Python uh, MPI for Pi. So then we would uh, basically assign the MPI com world object that's instantiated via this command to a, a variable com and uh, then com has a 
has a uh, attribute associated with it, uh, rank. So if you wanted to know how many, you know, the the no, the name of each process that was uh, initialized, we could use this uh, com dot rank to return that. So we've already seen this in class, but I'll go ahead and run it real quickly for you from the command line. So the way we'd run this is MPI exe c number of processes, say two, um, then we'll run Python, hello Py. And so if we run that, you can see that it runs the Hello World program returning uh, the rank, the index of the rank uh, at each process. So we could also, you know, say if we wanted to run this on four processors, we could do this. And uh, there you'd return. Now notice they're not in order. Um, that's just uh, they kind of run independently on their own, and however they get printed to the screen uh, is a somewhat random process. <clears throat> so, in point to point communication, which is what we've already taken a short look at in class, we're basically explicitly sending uh, one thing to another job. Uh, I'm sorry, to it. One, one, um, set of data at one rank to uh, an, uh, to another rank, uh, we're passing that set of data. So in this case, uh, these first few lines are just initializing the program. Uh, and then we're going to basically set up an array that's going to be filled with the rank ID. So V is going to be a NumPy array. And so if there's two ranks, the initial one would be uh, a, you know, zero, uh, 500 zeros. So 500 indicates the length of the array. Uh, the, the value here is going to be the value of the rank itself. So if it were rank zero, there'd be fi an array of 500 zeros. If uh, it's rank one, there's going to be an array of uh, 500 ones, and they're going to be of type float, okay? And so then we're just going to explicitly pass those along. So if the rank is zero, we're going to send it to one. If the rank is greater than zero, we're going to send it to uh, from uh, rank minus one to rank plus one. So we're going to um, receive from the previous, you know, if, if I'm rank three, then I'm going to receive from rank two, uh, and I'm going to send to rank four. So we're just passing the data along. Uh, it's kind of an un interesting program, but uh, this is what we're going to do. So this is actually very similar to what we did in class uh, the one day. And then at the end, we're just going to print uh, you know what what the rank is and and the data itself from each process. Uh, so if we go ahead and run this, um, we're going to run it with the same command except this time uh, the name of the file is send receive .py. and there you go. So in that case, I ran it with four. So basically, it's saying that rank one received the zeros, rank two. Uh, and again, they're printed to the screen somewhat randomly, so you can't really uh, make much of it. You know, typically we wouldn't uh, have them all print out on top of one another like this. We would only uh, kind of have one of the ranks print the results, uh, the f kind of finalized results. Uh, but that's that's how the, the send and receive program. So there's several different types of collecting communication. Uh, the most simplest would be uh, uh, to broadcast. So in a broadcast communication, we're going to take a single thing and we're going to send it out to all the processes, that single thing, distribute it to all the process. In a scatter communication, we're going to say take a single th thing and, and decompose it into multiple things and then send one of those out to each process. So this may be, say, a list uh, that's, say, 16 uh, of length 16. We could break that into four lists of four each, and then we would send each of those out to the individual processes. Okay, so that would be a scatter command. Uh, the gather command is the complement of that. So uh, we're basically going to take it, each of the individual things that are at each process, and gather them into a single list. So it would be the exact reverse of the scatter command. Okay, and then a parallel reduction is. Um, Basically, we're going to do some operation in parallel. So uh, if we wanted to add up these four numbers, one way to do that would be to add 1 and 3 in parallel with 5 and 7. 
and then add the two together. So if we added one and three, we'd have four. If we added five and seven, we'd have 12. And then once again, we add them to get 16. So here is showing with an addition operation, but you could also do a subtraction, uh, a multiply, a divide, uh, a max, a min, uh, and, or we could write our own operator. And so th these would all be used with the function reduce, but we just uh, tell it which operation to perform. This is called a parallel reduction. So uh, as an example of a scatter command, and this is typical um, format for an MPI program, is that you typically have one rank, typically rank zero, that acts as a, le a leader. Uh, in this case, uh, creating a list and then sending that list out to all the different processes. So we'll go ahead and show you what this program looks like. I apologize for that being on the screen. So if we run the, the scatter program then uh, you can see that uh, we basically uh, create a, a random grid there. Uh, in this case, since I initialized it on four processors, I get a four by four grid. And uh, then that is all scattered out. Each, each row of that grid is scattered out to all the process, which then just print uh, the results to the screen. So pretty simple program, but that's the, the idea behind scatter. Um, so then gather, as I mentioned, is the the uh, complementary command to scatter. So in this case, uh, we're going to start the program the same way. We're going to initialize and scatter. And then uh, up through here, then we're going to go ahead and print the, the array that we received. And we're going to square that array on each processor. And then we're going to send back uh, with, we're going to go back, uh, gather back at the, uh, at the root and we'll do that, you know, you can specify where we want to gather it to. The root has been assigned as rank zero here. So we're going to gather it back at the root, uh, the rank zero command, and then uh, print the result. So we're going to send each of those out to be squared, uh, each entry to be, to be squared, and then we'll print the result. So this is uh, how that command would look. We'll go and run it only on two processors just so you can see a little bit easier what's going on but we could run it on 4, 8, or 12, it doesn't matter. So in this case, uh, they're just the entries 0, 1, 2, 3 uh, that are scattered out and it's printed out. I got this array 0, 1, I got this array 2, 3, and then the entries uh, are squared. So of course, you know, 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, but 2 squared is 4, and 3 squared is 9. And so then you can see that they're collected there into one list at the end, uh, and this is printed out back on the rank zero. So, um, and this this is a you know slightly less interesting. Basically, we in a broadcast we're just going to send one item out uh, to all the processes. So uh, basically, we're just going to do the same exact thing, except right at the end. Uh, we're going to say um, from the rank zero, we're going to create a buffer that just uh, has the string done, and then we're going to broadcast that to all the processes to be printed. So we're going to broadcast the single string done out to all of the other ones and then print the result. So you're going to have the same, the exact same uh, as the previous. Uh, scatter gather run uh, the same results except at the end you just have done printed to the screen twice and if we change this to say four then you'd see the same thing there except now you have uh, an, a four by four array that gets scattered squared gathered and then done is printed out at the end so finally, we'll give an example of the reduce algorithm. Uh, so in this case, um, the initial part is exactly the same. We're going to scatter it, square it. And this time, instead of just doing a simple gather, we're going to do a reduction such that uh, not only uh, after we square the elements and, and they're brought back into one list, uh, they're going to be summed. So uh, 
in this case, you know, if we sent out a four by four, we got back a four by four. This time, we're only going to get back four entries because each, say, column in the row in the in the array are going to be summed. And so, to give you a demonstration of this, uh, we'll go ahead and run this this file. So the final so. The, the four by four here at the top is what, you know, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all the way to 15 is what was created. It, each row of that was sent out to each processor to get squared, and you can see the results of that here. So zero, um, th these are what, what each of those were received, uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12, 13, 14, 15 were each individually received at each process. They were then squared. I'm not printing out the result of that square. And then they were done, a, a parallel reduction was done in such that the first entry from each of the process was added up. And uh, you know, you, you could verify this if you square zero, square four, square eight, and square 12, and add them all up, you're gonna get 224, and the same goes here. If you square one, square five, square nine, and square 13, and add them all up, you're gonna get 276. So that's what that's doing. Um, maybe it's a little bit easier if you just do it on two processors. You can more or less see what's happening. So again, if I, if I uh, square zero, which is zero, and square two, which is four, and add them up, I'm going to get four. Here, if I square one, I get one. If I square three, I get nine, and I add them up, I'm going to get ten. Uh, so that's the, the answer there. So I'd encourage you to go out and play with these. Um, you know, uh, programs, you can basically copy and paste them right into a Python file and be able to run these. So here's just a couple of references. One of them's from the previous one. There's also some MPI, MPI for Pi documentation out there. So this is a very short uh, introduction to MPI in general, but also more specifically uh, using the MPI for Pi module.